What are the some of the biggest mistakes you and Adam have made in your bodybuilding careers, and what can we learn from them mm. to keep progressing as steadily as possible? I didn't move to mm. Thailand sooner. Uh, that's <laughs> number one. I can honestly say, like the beginning of my career, and I think just it's just inevitable. Everyone's going to do this, trying every fucking compound for no particular reason, just like wanting to experiment. Mm. You know, I was running DHB. I would try meth. We talked about like methyl trend, different things like that. Just thinking like there was a magic pill that was going to make me look like an IFBB pro and, and there never was there never was anything that was it was just always the fucking basics that worked the best I would say that another big mistake very clearly was I spent you know a, a year plus in a surplus thinking I was just gonna get fucking massive taking gear doing my thing training never really worked it was when I did a prep I got extremely lean and rebounded from that prep that I grew more than I I've literally to this day I still can't believe how much I grew in a span of a few months and, and changed into an entirely different human being that right there is probably the biggest lesson a lot of people want to wait until they are perfect to go to a show and it's like dude just fucking do a show even if you're a skinny prick the rebound is so <laughs> worth it in my opinion you know it's like you're never going to look the way you want to and it's just some a bullet you're gonna have to fucking bite and it's better to to get really really lean and then grow and as opposed to just being even slightly fat and then trying to put on more mass it just mm -hmm. doesn't work it doesn't work it, it's it sucks if you're somewhat lean you can you can bulk and you have this fucking great time and response but if you're you know at the ends of 15 body fat it's just you're so unresponsive to the food and it just gets worse and worse i think that's hands down my biggest mistake yeah i think you can add to that too like if you're an individual who has loose skin we've seen with clients mm, yeah loose skin if you have issues with appetite if you've got insulin issues with insulin sensitivity i've had clients diabetic level of levels of fasting glucose and if you're just doing a contest prep being super lean like it alleviated their glucose that i guess from my side Okay, interesting one. So this, I will say one is my opinion and my own personal bias. So I'm not going to say it's subjective, but you know, for the longest period of time, I self-coached myself and did a lot of research and didn't realize that a lot of guys, you're super knowledgeable, Colton, Steve, a lot of the good coaches out there, they've got 10, 15, 20 years of compressed knowledge. Now, again, I understand that a lot of it's budget related and stuff like that. But long story short, if you can afford to hire someone and you're still in your beginning stages, hire someone because you're compacting all those years of knowledge, if they're a good coach, and giving it to you to basically apply to your physique. So I saw, for example, and the reason why I say this is because when I started training, I was had, I guess, the, the opportunity to work with an exercise scientist and bodybuilder in South Africa. His name is Bruce Clarkson. He's not big on social media, but he this, he was bodybuilding before social media. But the dude was a genius when it came to training. Lo and behold, training is probably one of the areas. Obviously, we do everything here, pharmacology, nutrition, whatever. But lo and behold, training is one of my greater interest areas. One of the areas which I think I hold a greater level of knowledge in, simply because I was starting from a much, I guess, a more rapid base of knowledge and using Bruce, uh, you know, thank you to him, to basically expand my knowledge back in there and got a lot of the fundamentals right from the beginning. So I wasn't that guy trying to figure out progressive overload for five years. I wasn't that guy trying to work out like total volume and training and train intensity. I was doing that from the beginning. And I saw a much greater change in my physique to guys that I've coached or guys I've spoken to who don't even get the fundamentals right. Like they talk about pharmacology and shit like that. And they don't understand, genuinely don't understand how to train. I'll go to the gym, bro, and I just train hard. And I go by feel. Yeah, that works for Ronnie Coleman and a lot of other guys. Mm -hmm. But like I would say is either do a shitload of research yourself, which unfortunately most people aren't willing to do. I mean, the, you, you guys watching it, you probably, you guys probably do. Like, I appreciate your questions. I appreciate you do it. So you guys are probably the exception to the rule, but most people either don't have the time or just don't have the expertise. That's okay. Not everyone's research science. Not everyone understands how to interpret and apply data. But if you have the means and you can, it doesn't have to be a coach. It can be a, a knowledgeable, a really knowledgeable friend. Try just leverage those sources around you because they're going to help you not make a lot of mistakes in the beginning. Like the amount of people who don't fucking train hard enough or progressively overload is like wild to me. They're talking to me about like what cycle they should be running. I'm like, hang on. I've literally yeah. seen you train this gym for over a year. And I think I've seen you do the same weight on cable flies as your main chest movement for six months. And you ask me why your chest hasn't grown. I clearly can see you don't understand the fundamentals. It doesn't matter if you're taking 500 tests and 500 deco. Yeah, long story short is make sure you truly understand 
the fundamentals, either through your own extensive research and application of that. And it takes time, it takes time. Or if you can and have the means, hire someone reputable and knowledgeable to teach that to you. You're shortcutting that and not making a multitude of mistakes. So I could sit here and go on, you know, say, oh shit, there's like training mistakes, you know, not tracking training progress, or all these yeah. drug mistakes. But that's my best way to sum it all up is try to get your knowledge base expanded as quickly as possible. Cause that's just going to make it so much better uh, i can give another ex downstream example for the longest period of time it's, there's still stigma that like growth hormone and insulin only for advanced bodybuilders when you actually start to understand the compounds and their safety and the fact that we have so much data them and that they're bioidentical hormones you actually realize actually it's probably better to leverage these in lower doses synergistically than be that guy who's like yeah when i'm 300 pounds i'll use gh then i'll become an olympian like no you, and but yeah. if you had that knowledge and that's something that even i thought like when like 10 years ago but now having you know understood that i realized no, that's not the case. So maybe that's another one for you. Synergistic bioidentical uh, uh, hormone compounds. Test GH insulin. There we go. Yeah. Use that early on. <laughs> it works the fucking yeah. best. It always works the best. It always will. Yep. There's a reason we say that because I've done everything under the sun and experienced mm -hmm. nothing until test GH mm -hmm. or yep. test growth hormone insulin. I, I will say this with most things, it's worth mm -hmm. it to get that condensed knowledge from another person. A lot of people, and I'm very open about like my business and stuff, and I get a lot of DMs about like, hey man, can you help me start this business? Or can you help me start a coaching mm -hmm. business? Or how did you get into real estate? I like, am, and to be honest, I think I way overpaid this guy, but like, it's what it is. I paid for a business coach. It was like 26,000 USD to pay for him for six months or whatever. But while I didn't think it was worth it, it still leveraged so much of my time. I was like 22. It was so much of my time went into that and like listening to what he had to say, doing what he had told me to do that I, I literally like had when I was 23, I had three houses. Most people don't even have their first house until they're 30 or older. And and so this in, in any situation, it's like if I was younger, man, I would be spending every penny in into not education in a mm -hmm. sense, but like paying people who've done what I want to do, just having them like run me through the fucking ropes and like show me how this shit works. Cause at the end of the day, it's going to be so much. Yeah. Like Adam said, you're just, you're getting all that condensed information and then you're taking that person's 20 years of experience and then you're building off their experience. And so now you have mm -hmm. 30 years worth of experience that took you 10 years to build, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can't start with something like coaching, that's fine pay for you know paid paid discords go yeah. buy ebooks from reputable guys like fuck like training wise okay this is my own individual bias but like renaissance periodization okay go hit up jared fair dr mike go buy their book scientific principles mm -hmm. of hypertrophy go buy it go read it cover to cover then go ask me or, or jared or any one of the guys questions like, ask questions and i can guarantee you you will already know a shitload more than every other person who's got all their information from 60 second reels and just what they feel because don't get me wrong, I mean, we fucking do reels, there's good information out there, but like, I truly believe you're not going to get full development and, and proper context yeah. and decent knowledge from what unfortunately has now transitioned to an age of everything is like 60, 90, 90 seconds. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. get some good, maybe uh, thought provoking ideas to go do further research. Read a fucking book, a, yeah. a, 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 a book, a decent book. I mean, I'm sounding fucking old now, but like, no, yeah, I mean, go, do, yeah, go, go do, go do that. And like your questions will be answered and it's out there cheap, like, geez, man, like, I think a lot of these guys, like Kurt's uh, ebook on HGH, like if you ever wondered the mechanism of actions and really understanding HGH, read that. Or Steve's books on insulin. Steve's book on insulin, ebook on insulin, I truly think is the best insulin ebook out there. I haven't seen one better than it yet. Go read uh, or go purchase his ebook on insulin. It'll tell you everything you need to know. So yeah, go leverage that, guys. It's all out there. And, and I'll say this is just while we're on this fucking tangent, and I'll be done, I promise. Um, <laughs> Re reading is so important and i think adam is mm -hmm. so right like everything is distilled down to like video creators trying to hook you for attention where they just release like one content unit that one content unit is great but you lack so much perspective it's like trying to explain what does the word precarious mean to someone who doesn't even understand english it's impossible because the person doesn't even fundamentally understand the subject matter that you're talking about so that's why you know i think reading books is really good because it helps you get a full picture and then it also in my opinion helps you speak and be able to express thoughts and opinion better when you can read and write thoughts and that's like dude i carry this thing around with me everywhere i have read fucking so many books every day you know just fucking reading people ask a lot too how do you speak so clearly how do you fucking you know illustrate things and it's like you, you just you read and you speak and you you teach and these things happen so that's you know whatever tangent done